You're welcome to today's class. My name is Dr. Emmanuel Ada. I want to be taking you on the journey towards computer literacy, and especially for teachers and lecturers. Now, I want to make sure that as a teacher, as a lecturer, you're able to, to teach in the class using your computer and you become more effective and more efficient in the course of delivering your lectures. And now, well, assuming that you don't know anything about the computer, so we want to put those people that are still actually at the bottom up the ladder. And they want to say that, want to choose the topic saying, using the computer for the first time. Here we have our computer. To use the computer for the first time, you look for the power button. This is a laptop. Then you look at the front here, at the front of the computer here, about this area, you will normally see the switch button, the on and off button. So the power button is here. In this case, it's here. I'll just press it, put it on. I've pressed it, and it's coming on. That's the computer, it's coming on. And the process of preparing its files to work is what we call booting. So the system is booting now. You may call a computer a system, you may call it a PC, and so on. So if somebody says, my system is working, it's also telling you, my computer is working. Now it's booting up now. The time it takes to boot up completely depends on the speed of the computer. Now it has gone into the point. At this point, what you do is to click on any space. Just take your mouse and click. And you can see this. I have attached a mouse to the system. As a beginner, it's good you buy a mouse and attach it to the system so that it's, it's, it's more flexible. Okay, when you use the mouse, it's more flexible. So you just take your mouse. This button to the left is where you click. The right side is where you right click. Now, how do you handle the mouse? This is the mouse. You use your thumb and one, two, three, that's the third finger, to hold it. This is it. Okay? This is it. So, when you hold it with these two fingers, you will rest the first finger on the left button and your second finger on the second button here. Okay? And you place, it, you place this point of your hand on the table, on the surface. And you move like this. Okay? You move like this. You don't cover it with the whole of your hand. That's, this is not how to move the mouse. You don't it's move the mouse like this. Wrong. Just, all you need is just two fingers. You just lift it. Okay? Place this point here on the fulcrum. Okay? And on the surface, you just move. By so doing, you're going to have an accurate movement. So, to handle the mouse, just your thumb and your finger number three, you pick it, you rest this on the table, and you start moving. And also, some of us, as you move the mouse, you will click, once you click, you lift up your finger like that, you click, that's wrong. You click. Yes. So it's now asking for password. You click, move the mouse here, and you click on the space, and you enter the password. Here's my password. That's it. So it has locked me into the system. When the computer boots up, what you see is what you call the desktop. Okay. After putting on the computer and working for the day, and you want to shut down, you go down to the bottom left corner. This is the Windows icon. You click on it once. You click on this first item here. This is okay. This is the power. Click on it once. Then if you want to shut down, you select this option, shut down. If you want to restart the computer, you click on this. It will shut down and restart by itself. Then if maybe you are busy doing something, you don't want to, you don't want to, and you don't want anybody to access it. While you're away, you click on sleep. When you click on sleep, next time you click on, you need to log into the system to continue the use of the computer. 
the system, you have icons on the desktop. You have icons on the desktop, and an icon is actually a picture that represents a software. It's a pictorial representation of a program in the computer. Computers that have programs that have been installed in the, in the computer are represented by icons. Okay, so this space here, this empty space, is called the wallpaper. There's a wallpaper. Then at the bottom, the bottom, you have the taskbar. This is the taskbar. The bottommost part is called the task taskbar. If you go to the left, this left here, there's a start button here. The start button here. Okay, so if you click on it once. Pops up the window. You see the pop-up menu and move it. These are the programs that have been installed. The programs that have been installed. If you scroll your mouse, to be going up. If you be scrolling up or scrolling down. Meanwhile, the programs are arranged in an alphabetical order. Okay, in alphabetical order. Okay, so whichever one you want to run, you can click on it and start using it. Okay, so these are, these, are, these are icons on the taskbar. You can click on them once. This is Microsoft OneNote. This is Microsoft Word. This is Mozilla Firefox. It's a browser. You browse the internet and so on. Now, for example, if you go to the right side here, you have this your date. to the date. If I right click on this date now, this is where you adjust your date you can go up go up you can see adjust date stroke time you click on it okay now this current date and time this is it set time automatically is on that means if you're connected to the internet then it should use the internet time to set the local time here if you want to correct the time you click on it Okay, now I want to set the time manually. You can come look at this. It says set the date and time manually. Once you put this off, put it off, this one becomes enabled. It's disabled now. See, it becomes enabled. Then you click on it. Okay, say so change date and time. You can change the date here. You can pick, just click for the date. Okay, like that. There's the month and so on. There's the time, okay, 0.35, then click on change at the end. But my time here is correct, so I'll just leave here by clicking on cancel. Okay, so now I want, it, I want my time to be controlled by the internet time. So I'll just come here and say set time automatically. And meanwhile, for you to set time automatically, you must make sure that your time zone is correct, okay. Set time zone automatically is off here. Okay, for example, I'll come here, I'll come here and, uh, and uh, set the time zone here. Okay, let me expand. I'll set it, it's, it's a reset here. So uh, you have to open this and set the time zone that corresponds with your uh, geographical location. This West Central, this West Central Africa. Okay, that's my time zone. That is why I have to say it should, it should uh, uh, put off set time zone uh, manually. This manually came, okay, but it's off now. The automatic uh, uh, version is off. So set time automatically. I'll click on it. Yes. So if you use the internet to set my time. Once I'm through with all my changes, I can click. I can close this. Okay, that's it. So that's for the time. Okay. And there's a speaker. Okay, there's a speaker. If you click on it once, that's it up. Then if you come up, you can click on the body. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? That's the sound. So you can adjust the volume here by you click and drag to the left to reduce the volume. Click and drag to the right to increase the volume. That is the speaker. Okay, that's the speaker. That's lady. Then another thing, when you are here, this search field here, you can use it to run a program or you can use to search for files also. For example, you want to search for a file that contains, let's like, say, CCS card 
you see this card demo for example see this is a folder okay you just click on that that's it and yes so this is CCS card demo you need to search for files folders and programs now for example you can run your programs here too you may want to open Microsoft Word program I'll just say Word okay let's type Word there and press enter That's Microsoft Word for you. We shall go through this ones later. Okay, now to use Microsoft Word. Let me close this. For example, you want to use the program called PowerPoint. You just click to click there and just type PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Okay. You press enter. You can see it appear here already. Press enter. That's how to run programs using this text field. Okay, so this is our desktop. Just let me close this. I have closed it. I've closed it. Now on the desktop, you may want to find some things on it. Okay, like file. So what you do, personalizing your desktop, you just right click. I want to make sure that that's under Windows Explorer. I want to treat what's called Windows Explorer. In Windows 7, it's called Windows Explorer. But in Windows 10, they just call it File Explorer or Windows File Explorer. To open Windows File Explorer, it's better you just open uh, your computer here from the desktop. You bring the icons here. So you right click to bring the icons here. Right click. Click on Personalize. Personalize. Then I go to Themes. Themes. Click on Themes here. Okay, then I scroll down, I'll scroll down, okay, you see, desktop icon settings, click on this, desktop icon settings, it's clean up, that's it, that's it here, okay, this is here, so I'll just click, I want this to be on my desktop, so you check on them, I want the computer to be there, I want users files to be there. I want network, I want recycle bin, I want control panel to be there. After that, click on apply. Click on OK. It's OK. So I close the window. So with this, I've been able to bring this PC, this is the computer. Okay. In Windows 7, we call it computer, but in Windows 10, it says this PC, the same thing, this admin, okay, so anytime I want to open Windows Explorer, I will use this, but let's go ahead at first, we will get to Windows Explorer, I will explain more in details. Here, let us look at Windows Explorer. Good. We use it to organize files and folders in the system. Now, what is Windows Explorer again? It's actually a system software. In a computer, you have two types of software. You have the system software and you have the application software. System software is the one that comes with the computer and it uses to organize its files. Okay? While the application software is the what you use to carry out your jobs or you use to produce jobs to do whatever you want to do in the computer, it is actually called an application software. Examples of application software is your Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, the Corel Draw, and so on. Okay. So now, Windows Explorer or Windows File Explorer, how do you open it? Okay. You you see, I brought this up. This PC, you can open this. Good. Now what we are seeing here is Windows File Explorer. This Windows Explorer, this whole form. What we are seeing here is the Windows Explorer, okay? This is the left pane. If you select anything on the left side here, you will see it on the right hand side. And actually, this is the whole of your computer. This is this PC. If I click on this, 
you can see this is the content my computer has been partitioned into two so i have drive c and also drive d okay but if you open your system your computer you may just have c there okay you don't have this you may just have c and also this is your dvd rom okay it's your dvd rom that you put in your dvd or your cd is it so this is the content when you click on an object here you will see the content of the object on the right hand right hand side here for example this computer okay for example this like this this uh, document this document now okay these are all the files in the document okay it starts organizing them with by bringing forth the folders first these are the folders if i scroll these are files okay files on the these are files these are folders this document these pictures okay that was it okay and this desktop this desktop you're seeing here if i open this place if i click on desktop here okay all these files you're seeing here that the files on the desktop as well okay then uh, let's go there's this pc i said this, this pc see it gives you the details of what's in the computer okay that's that so this is windows file explorer now nothing you may want to know here is how files are displayed i want to open this document i'll double click on it yes i'll open it now you can have different views of your files and folders okay just right click on an empty space here empty space make sure you're not selecting that right click on an empty space i've done that you heard that sound i actually configured it on my system i'll teach you those ones later okay so I can to you so view okay view currently it's on that it's on details if i say extra large icons you can see that I press and drag or i just scroll can see that extra large icons all right click on it okay click on view i'll say medium icons good these are icons okay these are folders these are folders okay these are files I right click again so it depends on you you can view it whichever you want whichever way you want so these small icons you can see that yes, does it so this is how to arrange your objects your items in windows explorer to actually view them another thing i want to show you too is how to arrange your items maybe you want to arrange them according to maybe the file size or according to the 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 the, the, the or the, or the, the name the file name or the type and so on so you right click okay it's called sorting right click on your empty space as well click on sort by you can see that they sort by name okay you can sort by type you can sort ascending or descending okay so if you need more click on more for example if i want to sort all these files with the date that we have created Go down, go down, go down. Can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? This date access. Okay, can you see? Date created. Date created. Click on OK. You can also add more whichever you want to click here will be added to that list date created click on ok so if i come here now right click i say sort by okay date created going on you can see that so it's sorting them by the date we are created okay for you to confirm i'll right click okay all right click there and say view details details we put everything in one line okay then i'll go back and say and sort it again sort by okay date created so it is selected so it is selected okay so if you come here go to the date can you see date created you see the date there. See this 21st. It's on the 20th. It's on the 20th. 
okay it's the same june okay 2022 you can see that this 21st so it's actually reducing date is reducing okay by the time we got here you can see 21st yes yeah, i started from it has changed from files to folders okay that's why you're seeing that there so that's how to actually view your files in windows explorer you want to search anything you click on this click on it here you will see the content on the right hand side here okay that's just this document it downloads this downloads when you visit the internet and you download things they come into this folder called downloads how do you visit downloads folder if it's not here you go to pc okay go to big pc then you open c drive okay then you go to users users under users all the usernames created in this computer will be added will appear here so my own case is admin i'll double click and open it admin okay so under admin you're going to see my folder there is downloads okay there's downloads you can double click and open it these are the files that i have downloaded this actually happens where you have a computer where you have more than one username okay so you have more than one username when you download using a given user that logged in if you open download folder when another log user is logged in it may, you may not find those files that are actually downloaded because the files are downloaded in that person's profile this is my profile for example in this computer so with this this how to actually use windows explorer now the shortcut key of opening windows explorer is windows e the window key on your keyboard you press it and plus and key E in quick succession. Window E, I've pressed my own. That is it. Window E, very fast. You can use one hand. Okay, you use one hand. Your thumb will be on the Windows key, while your second finger will press the key E. Just like that, with one hand. Your left hand, of course, you can open Windows Explorer with the shortcut Windows E. You press it fast, Windows E. Windows E, okay, so that was it. Number seven, working with files and folders. Here we're gonna learn this on the screen, or we have on the screen. Number one, viewing files and folders. I've treated that the other time, okay, and I just repeat it. Viewing files and folders. I told you that uh, you can open Windows Explorer, Windows E, Okay, Windows E, you can decide to right click, okay, right click on an empty space, click on view, then choose any of these options, okay, to view your files and folders. Okay, that's just it, how to view files and folders. Let me leave here, I'll close this, okay, it's so going to close it. Okay. Number two, sorting files and folders. I've treated that too, okay, while we're treating Windows. Explorer, remember we, we sorted uh, files and folders. Then, number three, how to create a folder. Good. Number three, let's see how to create a folder. In, in a, more often than known, you have people creating files and folders everywhere on the desktop. It's not supposed to be. If you must have a folder on the desktop, what I do, I just create one full folder and I call it temp. Okay, I just create one folder here. I'll right click, come down, click on new. There you go, and you select for folder, this folder here. Click on this folder, give it the name. I call mine temp. Okay, temp. Press enter. That's it. So you've created a folder. It's as easy as that. To create a folder, you right click. On an empty space, okay, you move down, you select new, then you click on folder, okay. Now, anytime I have the cost to store something on my desktop, I'll better save it inside the temp folder here. So, to make your desktop to be neat, okay, you have a neat desktop. Know that you have a desktop and it's just so have for that littered with files and folders. You don't know which of them is application, you don't know which of them is a folder, you don't know which of them is a file. Okay, so it's better just create one folder on your desktop 
then you can now store all your files in, in it. I will put it. You can store all your files that are supposed to be on the desktop in this single folder called temp. Okay, so let's leave here. So we're talking about how to create folder. Normally, you create your folders inside the documents folder. So let's go Windows E. Windows E. Good. Go to documents. On your left is document. Is document. So these are my files. My files. For example, as a teacher, you want to create folders for your lessons. Okay. You can just open one, create a folder first. Right click. Go to new. Okay. Then go to folder and say lesson notes. Okay. Oh, sorry. I've inadvertently stopped that. It will happen to so many of us. When you, you, you can see the new folder, you just click on it. Right click on it and say rename. I'll call it lesson. Lesson notes. Okay. Lesson notes. Press enter to accept it. Okay. That's how to create a folder. I created a folder. Now, as you mean, in that lesson note, I have so many subjects. I have that subject. I will double click on it to open it. Okay. I will not keep in my subjects there. I will create a folder each for each subject. New. Okay. English language. English language. Press enter. Okay. Right click. New. On the folder. You have um, you have a mathematics. Press enter. Another folder. Okay. New. I have say biology. Enter. Another folder. Let's say um what's the name? Let's say literature. Okay. So you can see I've created all these folders. If you watch, they are being ordered alphabetically, okay? They're in alphabetical order. So by the time you create this, maybe talking about mathematics, you open it, this mathematics, okay? You can say mathematics, you can say this another GSS1, GSS1, that junior secondary school that will operate in Nigeria, okay? You can go again, like that, GSS2, J SS2 okay then go again new GSS3 like that okay at the end you go to the subject again this GSS1 can okay, now say keep the terms there first term okay can just say first term can say first term that was a first term Okay, you have second term, second term, you have third term, okay, so after creating folders like this, it's very easy for you to, to actually manage your work, okay, you can see, we have, let me put this, you can see, this is mathematics, SS1 first term. All the work you have in first term will be stored in this folder. Okay, so that's how to create folders. You can create folders inside folders inside folder. They can be nested. Okay, so this is how to create a folder. Let's go back. Good. Next thing, renaming a folder is not difficult. We've done it now. We did it the other time. Number four, renaming a folder. Okay. Can come here. Let me open this this PC. Trip me to Windows Explorer. Documents. Okay. Remember we have lesson notes. You can just click anywhere and press key L. L. Good. That's it. Lesson notes. I'll open it. Okay. Good. Then uh, say this literature. I want to call it literature in English. I want to rename it. So you right click on it and choose rename. Okay. Rename. If you tap now, it's going to erase everything there. So I have to click inside at the end that 
then press space bar in English okay good press enter yes by so doing I have renamed the folder from literature to literature in English that has rename the file the shortcut is you just select it and press F2 key F2 if you look at the first row on your keyboard going from the left to the right okay you see the second key there okay you have the first key actually is escape after escape you have f1 okay then you have f2 that's the f2 if you press the f2 key you can see it i've done it on my system it will it will uh, it is going to highlight it it's going to rename it so what you do you just click inside and type whatever change you want to make click outside so that's how to rename a file the shortcut is you select the item you want to rename and you press key f2 f2 key or you right click on it and you go down and you select rename okay the next thing let's look at copying files into a folder that's so easy copying files into a folder okay if i come here now it's my document my document i have a lot of files here this is one fish okay it's a web file it's a sound file okay this general demo I'll click on it I will just press ctrl C on my keyboard or right click on it right click on it right right click okay right click it's not left click you're going to right click on it then you move your mouse down until you get to copy then you click on copy good now it is on my clipboard the clipboard is the position where you have this pointer okay so I've copied it you go back to documents what is it there? Go to lesson. Okay, double click. Maybe I want to put the file. It was general demo. Let me put it inside biology folder. I will double click on it. And there are two ways. See that I right click here and click on paste, or I'll open inside. Okay, right click in the empty space. Just right click on an empty space, and you select paste as well. Click on paste. Yes while it's coming asking me what is saying he said the destination folder is a subfolder of the source folder okay let's skip let's skip okay let's go back let's go and copy again let's go back again documents okay and you click on something general demo i just right click and say copy okay then i go back to i'm taking that folder into lessons notes okay biology all right click and paste it there I paste it here yes that's it can you see that general demo so i've copied that into that you can as well copy a folder from one given location to another okay you can do that as well and uh, it's more common when you want to transfer a file from one computer to another you use what we call the flash drive okay copy into a flash drive and take it to the other one in the process of our trainings i'll teach you all those ones soon in the, i will take you through all those soon in the course of our training just remain just come to visit my youtube channel ccs cut uh, in this case you have i have ccs cut world ccs cut powerpoint ccs cut windows okay and ccs cut itself so in this case just visit CCS card windows okay CCS card windows is going to be there how to copy files from one computer to another is going to be there so let's continue deleting a folder deleting a file deleting a file is not difficult and make sure you don't delete what you have not created okay you might be causing a lot of havoc do not delete what you haven't created at all you can only delete the file you have created so i don't think we have to do that much okay this biology we brought this one here so we can delete it just click on it you press delete key on your keyboard okay or you right click on it okay and click on delete here it's gone close this now when you delete something 
probably you did it in error you can go back to your recycle bin this is the recycle bin you open it double click on it okay it was a demo something demo general demo see click on it and you right click on it and you say restore okay when you delete something it goes to the recycle bin when you delete files and folders they go to the recycle bin so you click on restore here is gone so to be sure go to documents okay the folder lesson notes okay biology good that is it it has been restored to its original location the same thing goes for folders okay because this uh, deleting a folder is the same thing what you do to delete a file you also do to delete a folder Okay, just right click on it. For example, I want to remove these uh, mathematics. I'll just right click on it and click on delete. And it will go. So it's gone. Okay. To get it back, you go to your recycle bin. The recycle bin, open it. Okay. Click on M. M again. That's it. Mathematics. Okay. So you right click on it and say restore but actually if you don't want it back again you want to delete it completely from the computer when you right click on it here you click on delete okay I've deleted it it will leave the recycle bin which means you cannot retrieve it anymore okay still processing good you see are you sure you want to permanently delete this folder i'll say yes is gone so it was not restored it was deleted from this point it will go completely i think with this we are finished on how to work with files and folders let's continue on our journey the next thing is adjusting your working environment number one there adjusting screen resolution screen resolution to adjust the screen resolution we right click on the desktop but first of all what is screen resolution screen resolution is the amount of pixels okay per square inch as you see the screen okay that is the size of items on the computer how the how large they're going to be or how small they're going to be is what you call screen resolution now the bigger the screen resolution the smaller the items okay the lower the resolutions the screen resolution the larger the items on the screen let me go again when you have a high screen resolution the items on your screen are going to be small okay well if you have a low screen resolution the items on your screen are going to be what large so to adjust the screen resolution you right click on an empty space on the desktop just right click you click on display settings it's coming up okay come here you scroll my mouse is here just scroll just scroll can you see that display resolution what I have now is 1280 by 720 the first item here stands for the width while this stands for the height okay so it is 1280 width by 720 high come here open it so you choose whichever one you want okay if you want this, you can put this, this 800 by 600, this is the minimum resolution you will always find on all the computers, okay, your PC, but this is the minimum, so for example, let me choose this, I'll click, you can see that, it's asking me, keep this display settings, I want to keep it, I'll click on this, keep changes, 
that's 800 by 600 let me minimize you can see the size of the items on the screen okay it's changed so let me go back just click on it here go back 1280 by 720 okay keep changes says so back now so that is it so that's how to adjust screen resolution for those that are advanced that your site is a little bit uh, affected you can see clearly it's good you reduce the resolution so that the size of the items on your screen can be larger okay two set system dates to time we have done that in the past remember set it to system dates to time you just come to time here come here right click on it here okay you go up adjust date sub time click on that okay there's a title bar drag it by this drag it just click, press and drag you want to move any form you click at the top here click it hold it down and move it wherever you want it to be okay so there's it so current date and time there's it set time automatically okay so this in this way the way it is now the internet is going to actually correct the system for me okay that is this region and so on okay region and so on so let's close this close this good next is setting wallpaper wallpaper is not difficult the same thing you just right click you want to set the wallpaper okay the background you right click on an empty space Then you click on personalize okay this background click on this background you scroll come down here and scroll this one is there currently if i want this i'll just click on this i've clicked on it already that is it that's how to change the background of the desktop okay that's it. Yeah, this choose fit okay at times it's possible that the, the picture is not uh, wide enough so you can choose any option here you can say stretch tile center and so on. let's leave it like that let me return to height was before there's this on this okay that's how to change the wallpaper configuring the mouse okay let's see how to configure our mouse to configure your mouse you go to control panel Okay, without I know we have control panel here. This is it. I would have opened, but the option that wouldn't fail you is to type it straight. So just click here on the search field and type control control panel. If once you just type control alone, you will even save there. Okay, I've typed control. Can you see it? control panel? Press enter. It's coming up. Okay. So what you do? It's possible I've opened mine before, that's why it's like this. When you open it for the first time, it's going to be this in this form. Yes, it's going to be in this form. When you open your control panel for the first time, that's what you see there. So you can go there, open it, and say small icons. Then we're going to mouse this mouse. You click on mouse here, okay? These are the center here. Click on mouse. Once. okay then you go to pointers okay on that pointers you open here okay ordinarily maybe smaller than this so make sure you come down this one two three four okay you can see that five extra large system scheme that's this one okay extra large system scheme that's what i'm using now it's already bigger can you see it? it's what i'm using now so you must have been using the smaller one which is uh, which is the, the 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 this one can you see no she's small but we prefer it bigger because when you're teaching in the classroom you want the pupils or the students to see your mouse pointer so you open this one two three four five that's it you can apply you come here pointer options pointer option then just maybe like this make sure you check this 
check on this then you click on apply There are, there are other things you can also configure the speed okay can you see select a pointer speed you can drag this but just leave them like that default value click on ok good that's how to configure mouse at the same time you can go online and get mouse pointer software okay you can install for example i have this one and this one I have this this one I have you can see this this my mouse pointer software because so that when you are moving the mouse pointer moving your mouse the pupils or the students will be able to see it clearly okay they know what you actually try to explain we go back here it's trying to load okay next thing is so uh, adjusting screen text size screen text size number five now in this case in this case you want the the, the, the text on your screen to be visible okay apart from apart from reducing the resolution of the system you can as well increase the, the, the size of the text how do you do that just right click right click click on personalize okay or click on display settings any any of them will still take you there so display settings and you click here click here and you type text size text size you can see the options here change the size of text apps and other items okay but in my own case i just want to change the text size so you click on this make text size bigger okay click on that good you can see so here I already have 140 you just press this drag it okay I want to make it bigger now you can see it's getting bigger this 174 I click on apply can you see that can you see they are bigger now can you see that good you see the, the all increase in size so this is how you can adjust the size of text of your system if you go to windows explorer for example let me just open this this computer this pc you can see how large they are you can see you can see the items they are so large let me take them back just right click on the desktop You select display settings. Okay, click here, text size. Come here, make text size bigger. Come here, take it back to 140. Press and drag to the left, 140 okay that's 140 click on apply beautiful so it's back to the original text size this is so that's how to adjust screen text size we have come to the end of these tutorials and uh, i want you to actually like my videos okay click on the subscribe button down and at the same time, you can send me your comments, okay? And if, you, if there's anything we didn't do well, you can as well tell me, just indicate, okay? And we'll improve on it. Now, I want you to go to my YouTube channel. If you are interested in learning Windows, you want to be better in how to manage the system, just search for CCS Cat Windows, okay? If you are interested in Microsoft Word, you want to learn Microsoft Word, search for CCS Cat Word. Okay, if you are interested in PowerPoint, also type CCS card PowerPoint. Then if you want to learn CCS card itself, which is computer aided teaching, just type CCS card as your search word in YouTube and you will see all the trainings there on how to actually computerize your teaching. Thank you for your audience. Thank you for actually following me till now. 
and uh, I want you to visit our website and see more resources and also how to get the software, CCS car software for managing your content, how to build your content, everything is there on our website. See you next time.